this project's about putting a drop gate on an existing 4x8 trailer that's already been modified. Overall a pretty good trailer, just doesn't have the drop gate. So we're going to go through all the steps required, the parts, and how to go about doing that. Fairly good project and it should make the trailer all the more useful. The first steps in getting something like this going is to be able to envision it, figure out how the parts are going to lay out, what you're really going to have to do. Uh, this particular trailer has a couple of limitations. What it is, it's already been upgraded. It was a fairly straightforward, inexpensive kind of Chinese trailer to which uh, reinforcing, reinforcing parts have been added. Um, so, in order to get this right, I'd like to build a cardboard template. This is pasteboard from a cardboard box. This is actually the left hand side so it would go on the other side. Uh, this would be simulating the right hand side how that would look. So this is all marked off as to where it needs to go at this point. Uh, and from that pattern what I did is I was able to transfer to this half inch piece of steel that has the slot, the oval slot cut into it and I've already made the first part of the drop gate that has the one inch pin in it as you can see right here and so this part uh, fits in there and this design is somewhat different from the usual drop gate in that uh, the drop gate itself will be able to bend over completely onto the bed and not uh, be in the way so that long items can be hauled or less wind resistance that kind of thing so this is uh, a fair amount of work and I'm going to bolt this on as opposed to welding it. We'll show how to, to set that up. I have the uh, first, first part of the project done which is the, the actual facing side of the drop gate to which everything else will be welded. And I just wanted to give you a note on setup. Uh, sometimes you know when you're not working with actual fixtures or let us say blueprints. Go ahead and try the Egyptian method. Get everything level first. If you've got everything level, then that means everything is parallel, which is another way of saying everything is square. So if everything is parallel and square, then your exact hole locations and all that should be right on the money. You shouldn't have to be too concerned. I don't have jigs or fixtures for this project, and and uh, I have a demo for how this is all assembled by welding but the point being that you're going to have to use some manual layout techniques if you approach a project like this and these are just some suggestions for how to proceed get all your measurements write them down I have, in fact that on the card I figured out that since my drop gate's five feet long it's going to have a 65 degree angle not that the angle is so important but just make sure that everything that you can do you've got written down in a form that you can understand it. We're going to do the trial assembly right now to be sure that everything's on track and it appears we're in pretty good shape. The hinge plates match up pretty darn well. Uh, I've got them in just about exactly the correct position or as close as I can and um, so looking good there. I put the hinge bar in and then this is approximately 65 degrees to, to demonstrate the deployed position if everything were welded on there. And then of course vertical or 90. And then uh, on over for the prone position that uh, shows you pretty well why that hinge uh, plate has to be the way it is. It shows that design over any of the others because I thought it was the best. Uh, you know when you come down here and you lock you're locking up real hard uh, with something that uh, is going to last. Um, I mentioned being level. I think that's an important consideration uh, and I checked this bar all the way across. Everything's level. Everything's true from the clear from the front edge of the trailer and all of the reference marks I've already put in there. It's, it's looking really good. There's one more thing I need to make uh, I'm going to make a jig that's going to actually clamp onto the side rails so that the holes can be very precisely located and 
one other thing before I forget. I, I'm going to put in the details for how to make the hinge bar because uh, there's there are a number of steps and I think that you should know how to make that in case you find that you do have to make something like that it makes it a lot better. When you're getting ready to weld something that's round against something that's flat, it's a good idea to go ahead and put the round member into a milling machine and get a flat uh, cut on a part of it, the part that's going to be in contact with the flat member. And then on the reverse side, cut a similar flat so that there's a place to clamp that to. And uh, that's how this was done. The flat you can see here is still there. And that aided in the positioning prior to welding. So to get the setup started, what I've done is I've placed these two clamps here to ensure there's uh, like a backboard support for the rod. And I check the position with the square ensuring that there's no excess clearance. And setting up this way in hand takes some, by hand takes some time, but uh, it's worth the effort so that you've got everything exactly where it's supposed to be and a way to check it before you actually start with any kind of welding. And then when you're going to weld, you're going to spot, uh, you're going to attack here, here, on the end, here, here, and here. Make sure those are good. And then after that, you can start welding and removing clamps as required. Okay, so we're a little further along, and what we're doing is we're taking this small machinist square and we're checking that the clearance is correct. Just a little bit of excess free play there, not much. Hmm. This is going to need to be changed a little. So, jockeying it back and forth, moving these clamps in a little bit. It takes about 20 minutes to set this up and then when it's absolutely, the clearance is perfect, that's when you do your tack welding. Okay, so tack welds are in position, not beautiful, but in position and uh, just a quick check, we're still in good shape. No, nothing's moved and uh, that's quite a thing to get that by hand uh, without a jig or fixture to, to be set up correctly but that's what you have to do it just takes time Okay, so this is a sample of the material that we're going to have to drill into. It's uh, the two-inch angle steel. Uh, I put, I cleaned it up, put the die cam on it, and I've got two lines that I've marked on here. I'll tell you about in just a second. But this is the tool or the jig that I I call it a jig because it goes on to the uh, work and it's going to mark your place and make it possible to locate holes uh, as as accurately as possible. For my purposes on this project, I'm going to call nominal tolerance plus or minus 20 thousandths of an inch. And uh, I know that's like splitting hairs. You're used to thinking about wood or something else that's, uh, you know, sixteenth of an inch or whatever. But uh, I'm going to shoot for 20 thousandths of an inch accuracy here. And I've got this built in. The distance between the centers is just about as good as it can get. It's under, under 10 thousandths. Um, so what I did is I took the quarter inch bushing of which I've got three quarter and three eighths and one half. I put a quarter inch drill bit in here, a new one that's sharp and fits very well. And then I, I sort of, you know, from the right hand side, I came out to the center and made a, a line. And then from the left hand side, repeated that and made a line. And so now what I have is this marked. I'll see if I can point this out. I'm not sure you can exactly see it. Maybe you can but there is a very fine difference from the bottom line. There's kind of a scribe mark or a rub mark. Don't, don't look at that. Just look at this fine line on the left. And then over here, there is 
it overlaps or it, it is above the one on the right. There, I measured it optically. There's ten thousandths of an inch difference. This one on the right is exactly one inch drop. This one on the left is one inch plus ten thousandths. So we're well within what I'm calling the nominal tolerance standard here, and uh, that should work for us. Um, honestly, in approaching a project like this where you can't take this off and work on it, I don't know what else you, you would do. Uh, even if you had a magnetic base drill and you positioned it, you've got to get it exactly right or you could end up Swiss cheesing it. Uh, you want to drill these holes a single time and get them right on the very first time. Uh, if you have to use some shims, fine. Uh, but uh, this is the approach that I think will work best. And uh, you should be able to confidently make your own tools. It's a crude tool. Uh, and uh, yet uh, it's really critical to you know a project of this type the the lessons in this project aren't just to build a drop gate it's to how do you handle uh something that's really a problem and do it accurately on the very first try We're quite a bit further along since the last demonstration. The two hinge plates are finished and uh, the jig that I made uh, worked very well. We got the bolts in there just fine. Uh, about the only thing missing right now is there is a washer that needs to go in there that I specially made and uh, then that should uh, take up any free play. Up here uh, I'm still working on the uh, pins. I made these custom pins to fit in here. They fit pretty tightly and still working on it. And then the bracing as such is not ready yet. There's another couple of parts that need to go in there. But overall, um, looking a lot better. I want to make sure to put this in there. Uh, this thing is a lot bigger and a lot heavier than I planned on, so I've got a crane, or an engine lift I should say, and I, I installed a lifting eye right up here to make sure that there is no way that uh, this thing gets out of control during the time that I'm working on it. So, if you are working on something like this by yourself, you definitely want to take into consideration a safety aspect this clamp is here. I don't want the, the drop gate to fall forward while I'm working on it because I do intend for it to go forward. I just don't want it to fall. And uh, anyway, I mentioned that everything was done kind of using the Egyptian method and uh, it is done that way. It's level. If you look here, that bubble is level. Le yeah, you can see it. The rest of it's level. Everything was leveled up before doing anything. And uh, so we're, we're making a lot of progress. There's a, a safety down there in case uh, it rocks back. But uh, I, I'm going to have to do the springs as a separate kind of project or something, I, I, I believe. And then I'm also doing another project to add shocks to this thing. But there you go. That it's in place. And when I get it uh, all put together, I'll be demonstrating how it works. Got the drop gate on, and the rest of the trailer is looking pretty good. Had to put some supports on there that you can see. Same trailer, but now with the added drop gate, I'm going to demonstrate. You see it in the deployed position. Makes it really easy to load things when you've got a longer gate like that, even though it is heavier. So I'm going to demonstrate it, and then we'll let it go from there. Pretty solid. So let's get it up. Handy screwdriver. 
do the tilt. There's a slight tilt on this driveway. Now I'm going to get up there and drop it clear down to show you how that works. bit of alignment but uh, pretty good overall I haven't gotten the springs in here yet uh, I'm still debating whether I want the garage door type spring or I want uh, the coiled spring uh, but overall I think uh, it's a pretty decent project it turned out pretty much the way I intended a little heavier than I had thought uh, this material including the grading is much much heavier than I ever planned on but I'm satisfied with it, and uh, I think it'll be very useful. One other thing of note, I ended up having to re-engineer this side plate. There was uh, good clearance for the deployed position and vertical, but when it came to actually having just a little bit of extra clearance so that uh, the in the reclined or the uh, stored position, uh, I had to uh, have a much larger opening so we could have some kick out. Uh, it didn't act that way when I was designing it and the demonstration I showed you earlier it cleared just fine. It laid over into that prone position. But uh, theory and actual practice is another thing. And by the time this went together there were just you know some variances. Pointing out the washer this freely turns custom-made washer on that side and also on this side yeah and uh, these supports just as a note here's the lifting eye that I welded into the top of the drop gate uh, I think it's a good idea uh, I worked on it by myself so you've got something definitely to hook onto this thing like I say is heavy well I hope these details help you and uh, you can upgrade your trailer. One other thing is, oh, I meant to mention that I added shock absorbers to this guy, and I've got a separate video out there, so you can check on that if that's uh, of any interest to you. I think it'll help. You can see them down there.